So again, we're in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 11. Uh, our key verses are going to be 17 through 27. Uh, I am going to step back and read all all of the verses just so we can have a flow of thought and a continuity of story while you're doing that I'm also going to ask that you put your finger in Romans uh, the first chapter verses 16 and 17 just going to add to the witness out of the book of Romans the very first chapter Verses 16 and 17. Very familiar uh, verses to us. Amen. How's that? How we look? Everybody looks good? Okay. Our primary text is going to be the Gospel of St. John, chapter 11. Key verses 17 through 27. Then we're going to add to the witness staying in the New Testament in the book of Romans, the very first chapter, verses 16 and 17. Amen? Everybody in good shape? Starting with John 11. Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. And it was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was now sick. Therefore the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples responded to him, Rabbi, lately the Jews sought to stone you. Are you going to go there again? Then Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of the world. But if one walks in the night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. These things he said, and after that he said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. Then his disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get well. However, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought that he was speaking about him taking rest in sleep. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Then Thomas, who is called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go that we may die with him. Amen? Amen. Now I'm picking up on our text for this Sunday. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away. And many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Now Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, 
who has come into this world. Amen? Amen. Let's just flip over and look at Romans 1. 16 and 17 again a familiar passage for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes for the Jew first and also for the Greek for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written the just shall live by faith. Amen. Amen. This morning, I want to talk from the subject, the maturation of Martha. The maturation of Martha. The maturation, that root word, we have that word maturity, which means to grow up. Yeah. to get better, to strengthen, to become stronger. And in this text that we're going to look at today, we're going to examine the maturation of Martha. Amen? Amen? Shall we bow our heads in prayer, Father in heaven? We thank you again for the privilege that has been given unto us. And that privilege is to study your word. We thank God for your word. It is by and through your word that we live and breathe and have our being. Thy word is a lamp unto our feet and thy word is a light unto our path. Illuminate our path pathway enlightened and broaden our mind not only of the things of this world but moreover of the world in which you live rule and reign sovereignly give us understanding into the deep things the spiritual things the things that can only be ascertained by faith and not human wisdom cause us to know things that we shouldn't know cause us to under th understand things that people are bad by cause us to receive a wisdom that is from on high because you said if any man lacks wisdom the only requirement is that we ask of God and so this morning Lord we ask you we come boldly to the throne of grace not asking for material things not asking for material wealth but we come asking for the riches of heaven that they be given unto us abundantly and not held back. Give us of the wisdom of God. Give us the understanding and the peace that passes all our imagination. God, we come to you because there's no other one we can go to. Thou alone has the words of eternal life. Speak now. Speak words of life, words of resurrecting power, that even though we are dead, in you we'll live again. This is our prayer today, and we ask it in Christ's name for his sake and for his glory alone. And all of God's people said amen, 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 amen. amen again. You may be seated all over the church. How many of you have ever heard this statement before? Oh, wow. I didn't know you could do that. Have you ever heard that before? Have you ever said it before to somebody? So, oh, wow. I didn't, I didn't know you could do that. Or I, I didn't know you knew that. It is, it is a statement that causes us to understand that no matter how well you know someone, there's still more to know. You follow what I'm saying? No matter how close of a friend, no matter how close of a companion, no matter how long the friendship, how long the relationship, the marriage, the kinship, whatever it may be, there are still things people can do and say that surprise you because you didn't know it about them. You didn't know they liked that kind of food. You didn't know they liked going to that kind of place. Uh, and, 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 and the longer we are with someone, in relationship with someone, we keep finding out new things, right? Amen. The longer you know them, you think it's the better you know them, but the better you know them, the more you find out. Uh, there's more things to know about them. Amen. Amen. And uh, it is actually 
um, in terms of not uh, relationships in general, but specifically in terms of marriage, it is actually one of the great things about being married. That even in your companionship, no matter how long that, that has been, how long you've been married, how many wedding anniversaries, there are still things about your com companion that are to be discovered. Amen? Now, I didn't get a lot of amens on that because most people stop searching. After the first or fifth or seventh wedding anniversary, they think, well, I know everything about them and they know everything about me. We know what they like to eat and where they like to go. But a lot of times we know what we know because oftentimes that's all we've ever done. You never know uh, your companion might like a different style of food if what? If you've never eaten it before. You never know that your companion may like uh, uh, a different type, uh, a different part of the country or a different part of the world until what? Until you go there. You get in there and say, oh my God, they're all happy and going all there. You say, what do I, what do I? Say, I didn't know. I never knew that you like this. I never knew that you would enjoy something like that. And so that's actually one of the dangers of marriage. No matter how long you're married, at some point you got to do something new. You, you, you got to try some new stuff, go to some different places. You got to break up the old routine because uh, in doing so, you'll, dis you'll discover something, one, not only about yourself, but you'll discover something about your companion that you didn't know. You'll find out things about them that you never knew before. You'll find out things about them uh, uh, that you never knew they had an interest in before until you are exposed to a new kind of situation. Are you with me? And I want to use that as a backdrop because if you can understand that in human relationship, it is that to the X to the X power when it comes to your relationship with God. Amen. No matter how much you know of God, there is more to him to find out. You follow what I'm saying? I don't care how long you've been in church. I don't care how long you've been saved. I don't care how long you've been a member. I don't care how long you served on the diaconate. I don't care how long you've been preaching. I don't care how long you've been serving. There is still more to God than what you know. The old folks used to quote, quote a scripture out of the Old Testament. They said the ways of the Lord is past finding out. That means there's, there's still more. Even what you find out, what you do know, there's still more to God. There's still more to uncover. Uh, there's still uh, aspects of his divinity and aspects of his holiness that you haven't seen, that you haven't known, nor have you been exposed to. Do you follow what I'm saying? And so today I want to talk about the maturation of Martha because what happens to Martha is what happens to a lot of us. Martha had gotten to a place in her relationship with Jesus Christ where she thought she knew everything. She, know, she, she joined his church in his very first sermon. She didn't wait. She got right in on the first day. She joined the church. She was a part of his ministry. She, was, she, she heard every sermon. She heard every Bible study. You follow what I'm saying? If anyone knew, look, she, he, he stayed at her house. She, he knew her family. He knew his. She knew everything there was to know about Jesus. Right. But in spite of everything she knew, there was still more to him to be found out. Amen? Amen? And so with that as a backdrop, let's turn our attention to the word of God. Amen? Amen. So verse 17 says, and so when Jesus came, he found that he, meaning Lazarus, had already been in the tomb four days. And I told you, we, we discussed this on last Sunday, Jesus needed not only for Lazarus to die, but he needed him to be good and dead. Good and dead. He could, we, we couldn't have him go down and someone say, oh, he was just in a coma and he, he, oh, he, just, he was just in a state of whatever and all, after a day or two he popped out of it. They needed him to be dead. And if you read the story down uh, further, he was not only dead, but Martha, uh, Martha said, by now he stinketh. I mean, he was good and dead. Do you follow what I'm saying? Touch your neighbor say, good and dead. Good and he waited, and we just read it before, he waited 
tell Lazarus was good and dead. Why? Because he was getting ready to show Martha something she had never seen before. Amen. Do you follow what I'm saying? Amen. And now, now, if you realize it or not, I'm preaching already because that's a word to somebody here that Christ is putting you in a situation, a circumstance, a predicament that you've never been in before for the purpose of revealing to you an aspect of his divinity that you've never seen before. And I know you've been in church a long time. And I know you're a good church girl and you're a good church guy. And you've been and you've been around a lot of church services and you know a lot of churchy things and you got a lot of churchy friends, but there's still some things about God you need to know. Are you with me this Sunday? Verse 18 says, Now Bethany was near Jerusalem. It was about a two miles away. And but this time, by the time Jesus came, it says, many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. And they, they, I just want to share this with you. They, they, they raised this point of the proximity uh, of Bethany to Jerusalem because, again, as we read, uh, reading all the previous verses, it was in Jerusalem that not long ago that all of the Jews there had conspired to stone Jesus. Right. They had not only con conspired to stone him, they had actually picked up the stones to commit the murderous act. Right. And it was on only by a miracle of God that Jesus, because his hour had not yet come, had escaped in their midst. He was able to walk through them unharmed. But yet, Thomas reminds us, he's saying, wait a minute, Lazarus is dead, I understand, but, but to get there, we got to go past Jerusalem, and it was Jerusalem where the people were trying to kill you. Right. Those were the, they, we're going to go back. Those are the same people that had stones in their hands, rocks in, in their fists, ready to stone you to death. But how many of you are glad that Jesus will come anyway? Amen. That in spite of our situations, our predicaments, our problems, our proclivities, I'm glad we serve a God that will come anyway. Not only will he come anyway, he'll come anywhere. Yes. I don't know about you. I've been rescued out of some places. I don't even want y'all to know where I was. I've been rescued out of some situations. I don't even want the church to know what I was doing, much less what I was doing there. And even though I don't want you to know, how many of you know I'm glad he knew? And in spite of what he caught me doing, in spite of what he caught me saying, in spite of where he caught me going, he came anyway. How many know Jesus will go into some unholy places, some unchurchified places? He'll go into some places that no Christian should ever be in. Why? Why? He wants to show you something that you have never seen before. Touch your name and say, I'm glad he came. Yeah, I needed him to come. Because if it was left up to me, I wouldn't have come to him. I would have been too ashamed to admit where I was. I would have been too guilt-written to admit what I had done. And I needed a Savior who would come and get me. Yes. Touch your neighbor and say, he came and got me. That's the only reason I'm in church today. He came and got me. That's the only reason I'm saved today. He came and got me. I couldn't come to him. I didn't want to come to him. I didn't even know he knew my name. But Jesus came to where I was. Somebody clap your hands and give the Lord a praise. Verse 20 says, Now Martha... As soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary was sitting in the house. This, this, you ever heard this cliche? Uh, uh, a desperate, desperate people do desperate things. If you get in a desperate enough situation, you'll, you'll do some desperate things. And I want to know, I want you to note the reaction. We just spent time talking about how Christ will come to us, how he'll make himself available to us, how he will come into our situation, even when we can't get into his. But now I want you to look at how 
people respond mm -hmm. to the presence of the Lord. Yeah. Are you looking at it? It's in verse 20. The text said that when it came to Martha, the text said as soon as she heard, she dropped everything. As soon, she said, wait a minute. This is the guy I've been waiting for. This is the one person who can do something about my situation about my condition, about my predicament. And she did, I'm just going to say it, she did what a lot of women won't do. She didn't act cute. My mother said, I'm out of here. You got to understand, her brother had died. She had a right to stay in the house. She had a right to keep on weeping. She had a right to keep busy planning the future. But the text said, as soon as she heard, and what I like about it, when we juxtapose it against Mary a few verses later, the text implies not that someone told her. The text implies she heard other people talking about Jesus. Yes. This, was, this was not a message hand delivered to Martha. Someone didn't come in the Mar <coughs> Hey, Sister Martha, I, um, I just want you to know G Jesus is outside. That wasn't this. Martha, if you know, Mar Martha's a busy woman. Martha was in doing what she was doing, planning for the funeral, cooking, cleaning, making preparation, and she heard the other women saying Jesus is passing by. I wish I had other women in my church. And, and she removed, she moved not at a personal invitation. She removed, she moved at a general invitation. She just heard that Jesus was passing by. And just at the hearing of a chance for things to be made better. The text said Martha left immediately. Touch your neighbor and say drop everything. See when, when, when your chance to get blessed comes up you can't be cute. I wish I had women in my church this Sunday. When your opportunity comes to have your situation changed. When your, when your opportunity comes to have your predicament corrected by the Holy One of Israel. Touch your neighbor and say you can't be cute. <laughs> not, not now. Not, may, maybe next Sunday we can act cute. Maybe next week we can act important. Maybe next week we can act like we got it going on. Now, but if I just hear that Jesus is passing by, now, this is the only one <laughs> capable to do anything. <laughs> able to do anything. <laughs> this may be my one chance. This may be my one opportunity. Jesus is passing by. Touch your neighbor and say drop everything. Yeah, if you want to get blessed, you got to drop everything. Watch this. Try this out on your other neighbor. Say drop everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You not only got to drop everything, but you got to drop everybody. I'm sure when Martha left, everybody started asking, saying, where's Martha going? What is she doing? She's supposed to stay in the house. She's supposed to keep on weeping and leaving. She's supposed to keep on cooking and cleaning. They didn't realize that Martha knew. This is my chance. This is my opportunity. I can be with you next week, but Jesus is passing by. I don't know if he'll pass by again. I don't know if he'll come my way again, but I'm going to drop everything and everybody because I'm on my way to see Jesus. Touch your neighbors here. I'm on my way. Martha dropped everything but Mary stayed in the house <laughs> Martha dropped everything everybody put the plates down left the vacuum cleaner running left half the laundry in the in the washing machine and the other half on the floor Martha got out of Dodge but not Mary the text said Mary was sitting in that Mary heard Mary heard 
She heard the other weeple saying, hey, 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 Jesus of Nazareth is coming down the road. Martha got up and left, but Mary stayed in the house. Now, I want you to do me a favor. You got to make a note on that because I'm not preaching Mary this Sunday. That'll be next Sunday. But just, just put a footnote on that because we're going to pull it in next Sunday. Okay? But this Sunday, I just want to compare and try. Look what I wrote in my notes. Which one are you? That's what I wrote in my notes. Are, are, are you Martha or are you Mary? Are you the kind of woman that will drop everything for Jesus? Or are you Mary that keeps sitting in the house? Amen. Somebody say, leave it alone, Pastor. Don't, 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 don't pull our card out here. Not when we got on all this red. <laughs> Not when we all unified. Don't, 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 don't start name calling. I'm a good pastor. I won't. I'll leave you alone. Here we go. Verse 21. Here it is. Here it is. Now Martha says to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Verse 22, but even now, and in my Bible, I underlined this. She said, I know. That's what she said. Had you been here, he wouldn't die. But even now, Martha said, I know. She wasn't guessing. She wasn't hypothesis. She said, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Martha said, had you been here, he wouldn't have died. Anyone know why Martha said that? Martha said that because if you're holding the notes in your hand, Martha said it because she, she was there when he healed the nobleman's son. Martha was there. Martha stood there and watched Jesus speak a word of healing that healed a man's son who wasn't even in the vicinity. Right. Martha was there. Martha was there when Jesus took fish and loaves of bread and fed a multitude. I don't, I, I told, I, I, if, I, if I didn't, let me tell you again. Martha was a church girl. If you didn't know that. She was, she was at all the events because they all happened in what? In church. And Martha was a church girl. Mar 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 Martha knew her pastor. Lord Jesus was, she said, and I know. She said, she said, I was there a few weeks ago when you gave sight to a man born blind. She said, oh yeah, I was there. She said, I was there. She said, I was there when you caused a lame man to get up and walk by the pool of Bethesda. You follow what I'm saying? Martha knew. She was a church girl. She was there. She had seen the miracles. And all of the miracles that had happened to people happened when they were bad, but not worse. The blind man was in a bad situation. The lame man was in a bad fix. But it wasn't over. He had already been there 38 years, and he probably would have been there another 38 years. He was handicapped. He was in a bad situation, but it wasn't over for him. Do you follow what I'm saying? The little boy, now that's the only one who got close to death, but what? He wasn't dead. And Jesus saved time, and instead of going, he just spoke a word. So Martha's, I can understand why Martha said, I know you could have done something. Why? She was an eyewitness. She knew her pastor. She knew the Lord Jesus. So she, told, she said, I know. She said, had you been here, I know you could have done something about this. Had you been here, had you gotten here before the situation flatlined, I know you could have, you could have said something. You could have spoken something. You could have lifted your hand. You could have prayed to God. And got something done. She knew, right? That's what she said. Look, it's in your Bible. Verse 20, she said, I know. Now, no, 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 go down. Verse 23. So Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Amen. Martha said, If you would have gotten here in time, I know you could have done something. 
I know you, I know you could have, and I know you would have, because I know you loved my brother. But now, it's too late. That's what she's saying. You read the story. That's what she's saying. She's saying, but now, it's too late. And I want to emphasize that last statement she says. She said, I know that even now, whatever you ask of God, God would give you. I want to be clear on the interpretation of this, because if you read the fuller story, she was not saying that she believed he could raise Lazarus from the dead. That is not what she's saying. Why? Just read the rest of the story. Read the rest of the story. She's saying, look, he's thinking that she was convinced. She was convinced he could have done something before he died. But now that he was dead, you follow what I'm saying? What she was saying by that statement, she was implying that Jesus could pray and somehow make things better. By comforting them, by comforting others, you follow what I'm saying? But she was not saying, I know that you'll raise him again. You follow what I'm saying? Look, let's just read the story, right? So Jesus now comes and says to her, your brother will rise again. Amen. What do you do when Jesus says something that is unbelievable? That's what she's faced with. She ju he just said something to her that plain and simply was unbelievable. Had he said, had he gotten there on time and said, your son will, your brother will get better? He said, I could have believed that. I could have. But now that he's dead, I just can't deal with what you just said, that he will rise again. Ask yourself, what do you do when God tells you something unbelievable? I mean, not, I mean not, not, not just unbelievable, but hard to even get your hands around. And let me tell you why it was unbelievable, so hard for her to get her arms around this. Because no one had ever been raised from the dead. That's what made it so unbelievable. Had Jesus gotten there on time and said, hey, Lazarus will get better, she could have believed that. Yeah, yeah. Why? She saw the normal men's sons get better. She saw the lame man get up and walk. She, uh, uh, she saw the blind. She, she, she had faith for that. But now, Jesus was challenging her with something unbelievable. So here we go. So now, now this is Martha, verse 23. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. So Martha responds to him and says this. Are you, see, I got good. That's my, yeah, I, I'm, I'm in my real church now. That, what's the, if you haven't underlined, underline it. What she said, the first two words out of her mouth. I know. She's a church girl. You got to understand, th 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 this, this is not some unsaved or heathen woman. This woman was saved, baptized, filled with up. She was in the church. She went to the church services. She took notes on all of the pastor's sermons. She knew of, the teach of his teaching. And look what she said. She said, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection right. of the last day. Right. Yes. Right. Right. You know how she knew that? Because Jesus had taught it. I told you she's a church girl, y'all. Well, let me do it this way. How many women in here are church women? Look, never scared to put their hand up now. They're like, he don't know. We don't know where he gonna go. Someone just put their elbow up. They're like, just in case he do something crazy, I'll keep my hand back. Let this elbow speak for me. She said, I know if you would have gotten here on time, you could have done something about it. She said, look, I've got my Bible study notes. I've listened I've listen every Friday night. I know he'll live again in the resurrection of the last day. I know it because you taught it. And not only did you teach it, I believed it. She said, so I, I, I know all of that. I, 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 know, I know what you can do. I know what you have taught and what will come to pass. That, that I already know. Now Jesus confronts her and now says, I am the resurrection 
and the life. Yes, yes. Now remember, he's, he's challenging her to believe something she can't believe. He's challenging her to believe something, listen to me women, that she has no frame of reference for. If you're taking notes, write this statement down. Our faith can easily believe things our eyes have already seen. I can believe the Lord healed me once I hear your testimony of how he healed you. I can believe that the Lord will bless me with a new house after I heard your testimony of how he Bless you with a new house. Why? Because our faith can easily believe what our eyes have seen. But, but what do we do when we're faced with a situation that we have no frame of reference for? What, what do you do when you're faced with a situation and none of your girlfriends are dealing with this? They, they got their own problems. I'll, I'll agree to that. But it ain't this. They, they're dealing with some stuff. And, I, and I, I've heard them tell me. But they're not dealing with this. Not, not what I'm facing. Not, not what I'm being challenged with right now. They've got theirs and I've got mine. But I don't have a frame of... I don't have a witness. I don't have a sermon. I don't have a testimony. I don't have someone to come and encourage me. Say that they've already been through that. I have no frame of reference for this. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Am I talking to myself or you know what I'm talking about? You, you know what it's like to have a situation you don't have a frame of reference for. Your husband can't agree with you. Your, your prayer partner can't come in and pray on one accord because they don't know. What do you do when you face a situation that you got no frame of reference for? What do you do when God challenges you to believe something you can't. Amen. It's easy to believe God for what you can believe. But what do you do when he challenges you to believe something that you can't believe? Am I talking to anybody in here? I don't know whether you realize. I'm, I'm finished. I'm, I'm winding this thing down. Jesus says to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Now I know what I know. I know what Sister Martha said, because Martha's a church girl. Sister Martha started playing back all the sermons. She said, "Wait a minute." She said, "I know you're the bread of life," because I heard that sermon. I was there. I, I was in Jerusalem when you preached that, and I and I and I and I and I know for a fact that you are the light of the world. I was in Jerusalem for that sermon. And she said, look, I was there last week when you told the crowd, you're the door. She said, I know that one. I, I, I got, matter of fact, I brought the CD to that sermon. I know that one. Jesus preached that Sunday. Then he went, but then she said, I also know you're the good shepherd. I know that. That was a, you did a revival that week. And you just worked that shepherd all week long. You just, you just worked from, from Psalms 23. She said, I know that. But I have never known you to be the resurrection. Jesus was trying to get her to see a different aspect of who he was. Jesus told his boys when news came of Lazarus, this sickness is not unto death but rather it's for the glory of God and how God's going to get some glory is that that the son of God is going to be glorified or made brighter or made larger through it she knew Jesus she knew he could heal she knew he could teach she knew he could do miracles but she didn't know that he was the resurrection 
I wish I had help this Sunday. I'm trying to tell you I'm finished. That You got the whole sermon. This is the maturation of Martha. Martha was a church woman. <laughs> she knew the Bible basics. <laughs> she knew the fundamentals of the Christian faith. <laughs> Martha knew how to pray. <laughs> Martha knew how to get a breakthrough. <laughs> Martha knew how to be a dutiful woman. <laughs> she knew her pastor. <laughs> she knew church protocol. <laughs> but God was challenging her <laughs> to see something different <laughs> about her Jesus. <laughs> Touch your neighbor and say he's up to something new. <laughs> what is this resurrection? <laughs> I know about the resurrection that is to come. I know that, but I didn't know that the resurrection was already here. Touch your neighbor and said he's already here. I am the resurrection and the life. Though he be dead, yet, yet, yet shall he live again. Somebody say it. may be dead though the situation may be dead though the problem may be dead I am the resurrection though it be dead though you be dead you shall you shall you shall you shall touch three people and say live again say live again I know I'm dead now I know the situation has gone flatline but I'm learning something new this Sunday I'm learning something new about my God Weeping may endure for a night, but if I learn this lesson, if I see him in a new aspect of his divinity, if I wake into a new creative power, come on, where my bootleg preachers at? Where are my preachers that don't have a minister's license yet? Use your good preaching voice. Joy! 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 It's coming in the morning. I'm dead tonight. <laughs> Just wait till the morning. I've learned something new about God in the middle night of the hour. I've learned something new about my Savior in the midnight hour. He said, Hold on, wait a little while. I am the resurrection. Three people say it's coming back to life. Yeah, yeah. That dead thing, that dead problem, those dead finances, those dead relationships, it's coming back to life. Something about my Jesus is going to turn it all the way around. Somebody give him a prayer.
coming back. I'm coming back. My family's coming back. My money's coming back. My joy's coming back. I serve the resurrection and the life. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on before we get carried away. Look. Look at what else he said to Martha. I'm the resurrection. I'm the life. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Anyone dead? They'll live again. Anyone that's alive, they'll never die. But look at what he said to Martha. He said, Do you believe? Wait a minute. Too often, as church women, church men, we shout and rejoice over things we have heard. But I'm going to apologize this Sunday. And I'm going to ask all of you to sit down because this praise is not for people who have just heard a good sermon. This praise is not for people who have just heard a good testimony. Touch your neighbor and say, this praise is not for you. Jesus said, the only people I want praising me are those that believe. Because the Bible says, faith cometh by. Touch your neighbor and say, that's how it starts. But if you're going to get in on this place, you got to do more than just hear it. Touch your name and say, do you believe? I want to invite all of the believers to give the Lord a praise. If you just like what you hear, like how it sounds, this praise is not for you. But if you believe down in your soul that though it be dead, God is able to raise it up again. Give your God, give your God, give your God the praise. shout because I believe. I clap my hands because I believe. I stomp my feet because I believe. I spin around because I believe. Go in the real place. 
praise. Come on, go in the real praise. Come on, come on, come on. Give him an I believe kind of praise. Get out of my way, devil. It's too late. I believe you should have killed me. Too late. That's why I praise him because I believe. That's why I dance because I believe. That's why I pray. I believe. Let me say this and we're done. Let me say this and we're finished. We added to the witness this morning out of the book of Romans. And the book of Romans says we go from faith to faith. And the reason I had to preach about the maturation of Martha because God is calling his daughters to go from faith to more faith. I know you got faith. I know you know him. I know you believe him. But if you'll just stretch a little further He's going to show you something about him you've never seen before. Why? Because he's calling you from faith to faith. He's calling you from one level of glory to another level of glory. There's something he's going to show you this time that you've never seen before. There's something about his word this time. <laughs> You're going to understand <laughs> that you never understood before. Why? Because he's growing you up. <laughs> You've already done everything you can do on that level. And Jesus Christ being what his disciples called him rabbi or good teacher a good teacher is always doing what to her students she's always stretching them she doesn't matter how far you get she'll come in tomorrow with something what new to stretch your learning to stretch your knowledge she's always tugging on your wisdom never satisfied to leave you where you are so that's my message to the church he know we got faith we wouldn't have made it this far if we didn't have faith 
So it's not an issue of faith or no faith. Uh -huh. It's an issue of faith and more faith. Let me say this and I'm, and I'm out. Oftentimes, in order to get us to take that next step, to go from faith to more faith, he'll often put us in an unbelievable situation. Now look, I'm with you. I wish he could teach it another way. If Jesus said, I'm going to teach you how to go for more faith over the next four Friday nights, I'd be here every Friday night. i come early. But, but the good rabbi doesn't teach that way. He'll put you in situations you don't have any frame of reference for. Nobody in your circle has, it's not that they haven't come out of it, they haven't even faced it. Yeah. It'd be different if they faced it and it just didn't work. I mean, there's, you can, you, as soon as you begin to tell them, you can look at their face and say, they don't know what I'm talking about. So you, and you know, and then it was, and, and you can just look at them like, uh, never mind. You, you can just, know, they don't know. Not that they're not your friend, not that they don't love it, they just can't relate to it. Because they've never been in that situation. But guess what? You are. Listen, church. Listen. And you're not there because he's trying to break you. You're not there because he's trying to punish you. You're, he's, you're not there because you forgot to pray seven times last week. That's not why you're there. He's there because he's getting ready to stretch your faith. And the only way to do it is to put you in a situation you've never been in before. Because if he put you in a situation you've been in before, you would trust how you got out last time instead of him. So he's got to put you in a place. As much as it hurts, he has to let Lazarus die. He didn't want Lazarus dead. We know it because he raised him up. That's never what he wanted. That's never what he wanted for Lazarus. That's never what he wanted for you. But he had to get you somewhere. Out on an island. I mean, no help nowhere. For you to finally understand that my help cometh from the Lord. And long as, you, as long as you had too much help around you, you never prayed that prayer. You never gave him that kind of adoration. You always thanked him for the people around you, but you never thanked him for him. I don't care what you say. I know I'm preaching to somebody. I don't, you don't have to say amen. You don't have to stand up. You don't have to spin around. The Holy Spirit said, preach the maturation of Martha. Because he said, I have Marthas all over the church. And I got to grow them up. Why? There's a new level of glory. I'm getting ready to take them to. How many of you know new levels, new devils? How many of you know, how, how many of you know new heights, new fights? And you're not going to be able to fight with the same level of, of, of weaponry that you did on this level. So we sent you here this Sunday to increase your arsenal. He's giving you some new stuff to fight with. Amen. Yesterday's faith was good for yesterday's fight. Amen. But he said, give us this day our daily bread. Give me the bread I need today. Lord Jesus, I'm facing new stuff. I'm dealing with new people in my life. I got new situations all around me. Give me the bread for today. Amen. Thank God. 
And even if I have to eat it in an uncomfortable situation, just give me the bread. I don't mind being out. I don't, I don't mind people seeing how I really look. Just give me the bread. When you get hungry, you just want the bread. You don't, you don't care how it comes, when it comes, wh whether it's wheat, rye, ray, it doesn't, it doesn't, just give me the bread. You know what I love about this text that I'm finished? You know what I love about the text? Look at what Martha said. When she started, she didn't believe. She told him, had you come before he died, I would have believed you. If you're talking about the resurrection in the last day, she said, I do believe you. But if you're talking about raising my brother today, are you talking about fixing my situation today? My situation stinketh, Lord. And you're talking about resurrection power for today? Come on. Thank you. I can't believe it. Lord, it's not it's not possible. That's why the man said to Jesus, Lord, help my unbelief. Help me to believe things that are unbelievable. Help me to believe things about your word that I never believed before. I'm finished, church. You got the word. 